Welcome to Bard's Gaming Corner. This is part 2 of my series on the renaissance of the isometric RPG genre. And this video is about Divinity Original Sin by Larian Studios. First, a small correction. This series will focus on Wasteland 2, Divinity Original Sin and Pillars of Eternity. And maybe later on some other great titles as well. I falsely thought that Wasteland 2 was released before Divinity Original Sin. But it is actually the other way around. Divinity Original Sin was released for PC on the 30th of June 2014. Wasteland 2 was released on PC in the same year, but on September the 19th. So my apologies for that. Second. If you like this type of content, hit the like and subscribe button. It will let the YouTube algorithm know that my channel is worth it and you would really help me out. On with the video. My introduction to Divinity Original Sin. While I always like to keep tabs on the latest game news by following certain gaming channels and websites, I was alerted to the existence of Divinity Original Sin by a co-worker when I was working in the wonderful world of corporate social media. Notice my sarcasm there. We were both RPG and strategy geeks and enjoyed exchanging gaming war stories. He pointed me to Divinity Original Sin, a new RPG inspired by the original Baldur's Gate series by a small company called Larian Studios from Belgium. The game then was still in the beta phase or kickstarter phase, but after doing some online research I was intrigued and decided to invest my hard earned money. After downloading the game at first glance I was pleasantly surprised by the graphics and gameplay. This was a colorful nice looking RPG in 3D and after easily surviving the tutorial I had high hopes Original Sin would become my, a new favorite of mine. This feeling quickly changed however after encountering a party of low level orcs and repeatedly getting my butt kicked. I tried again when the full game was released and had the same experience over and over again. The first couple of hours of original sin are hard when you're winging it. It left me frustrated and I ignored the game for a period. My coworker however egged me on to give it a chance. After a while, the game does become brilliant, he told me. Alright, I will give it an honest try. But in order to prepare myself, this time I did some research on YouTube on how to build and start with a party that is actually able to survive the first part of the game. And that worked. The game still was quite challenging at times, but I was able to finish the first chapter with much more ease and enjoyment. So while on the whole I wouldn't say Divinity Original Sin is one of my all time favorite RPGs, it still is a fun, challenging and enjoyable game. And one where you as a gamer aren't led by the hand, you have to use your wits. A lot. A short history of Larian Studios and the Divinity series. Larian Studios was founded in 1996 by Belgium developer Sven Vinke. The studio got its feet wet by creating both educational and casino games, for Flemish TV station Catnet for instance, and released its first major video game with the action RPG Divine Divinity in 2002. Divine Divinity was a hack and slash action RPG very much inspired by the Diablo series, but with more traditional RPG elements added as well such as more dialogue options and a skill tree which could be learned by any character you were playing with. The game overall got a good reception and was nominated for several game awards, losing out however to Neverwinter Nights and Elder Scrolls Morrowind. RPG Faults did see the brilliance of Divine Divinity giving out the following awards. Surprise of the Year and outstanding achievement in music. Larian followed with a couple of sequels, Beyond Divinity in 2004, 
Divinity 2 Ego Draconis in 2009, Divinity 2 Flames of Vengeance in 2010, and a real-time strategy game taking place in the same universe, Divinity Dragon Commander in 2013. I must admit, I myself was completely oblivious to the existence of these games until I bought Divinity Original Sin. Most of these, if not all of them, can be bought nowadays either on GOG.com or Steam. With Divinity Original Sin, Larian Studios wanted to use the same game universe, but with a different type of RPG. A more classic, or isometric if you will, style of play. In order to offer more gameplay elements and content, a Kickstarter campaign was launched in late March of 2013 and with other investments netted a nice cool 1 million euros. Overall the game had a budget of 4 million euros. Launch gate of the full game was initially set for the end of 2013 but was delayed until on the 30th of June 2014. The game in a nutshell. Divinity Original Sin is a classic party based RPG. It is set in the world of Rivlon where you start out with a party of two so called source hunters. Source hunters are tasked with finding and dealing with individuals who use the dangerous and forbidden magic called source. It's your job to find the murderer of a council member of the port city of Sysil. This murderer is a suspected sorcerer, so this is why you are sent. On arrival you find that Sysil is being besieged by an army and navy of orcs and that the countryside is pretty much overrun by undead. So next to you revealing who the killer is, you have to deal with these threats as well. Maybe they are connected. In town you will meet a couple of other playable characters who you can add to your party up and until a party of four. The main quest is interesting and engaging with much of the lore being a throwback to the original games. And there are a lot of fun side quests as well ranging from trying to put out a fire on a ship to trying to reconnect a talking head to its headless body. It's in the gameplay where Divinity Original Sin shines. Combat is done by tactical turn-based battles, many of which play out almost like a puzzle, especially in boss fights, where just rushing in and using regular attacks will get you killed quite quickly. Strategy and intelligence is needed. One very nifty feature is that you can utilize almost any element in the game. You can fling crates towards mines. Is your enemy standing on a water surface, fling a bolt of electricity for extra damage. Or use a freeze spell, so his mobility is impaired by ice. The options are almost endless. No other game had this before Original Sin. Like I said at the start of the video, I had a hard time getting to grips with the basics of the game. So if you're a beginner, or even intermediate in the RPG genre, I can highly recommend using an online guide or tutorial. Trust me, it will increase the enjoyment of Original Sin. The graphics are nice, colorful and in 3D. They are pretty good, especially for a game with such a small budget. Personally, I think the graphics of Divinity Original Sin are somewhat more superior than those of Wasteland 2. The overall style and feel of the graphics can come across as somewhat cartoonish. The much lauded sequel Divinity Original Sin improved somewhat on that, but that is a small gripe. The soundtrack is a rousing classical score, you get greeted by that as soon as you start the game. Voice acting is of a high level. I personally can recommend playing the enhanced version of the game. Some gameplay elements have been improved and almost every line of dialogue is voice acted. Which isn't the case in the original vanilla version. Why Divinity Original Sin rebooted the isometric RPG genre? Now, stating that Divinity Original Sin is the game that rebooted the isometric RPG genre, or classic genre, would be somewhat of an overstretch. It was more of a collective effort 
with Wasteland 2, Pillars of Eternity having roles as well, and later titles like Pathfinder, Kingmaker also. But Original Sin had a big part in this. The game overall got positive reviews, being called original and a return to classic RPGs, hence the connection to the isometric genre. Although many reviewers also commented that this isn't a game which takes the player by the hand, which is something I concur. Sales figures were pretty impressive as well. In the first week 160,000 copies were sold and by September a whopping 500,000 copies were sold. Pretty amazing for an indie game. It gave Larian Studios both the confidence and means to produce an even better sequel, Divinity Original Sin 2, which is considered one of the best, if not the best, of the current crop of classic isometric RPGs. Combined with the release of Wasteland 2 in September of the same year, and another fantasy party-based RPG in 2015, the stage was set for the classic RPG genre to make a comeback. That other game is Pillars of Eternity, a true old-fashioned isometric RPG with a completely new game engine and universe, which is the topic of my next video.